So let's talk now about gRPC reflection and the CLI or common line interface. So when we've seen before, when the clients do try to connect to our server, they will have to have a .proto file on their code, basically to produce code and generate code, and then that will define the service. And this is how the clients connect to our server. We've seen both the server and the clients have the same proto file. And this is very fine when you apply an application to production because you definitely want to know the API you're talking to in advance. But what about development? Well, in development, you have a gRPC server, and sometimes you don't even know what it's capable of doing. You just want to see and ask the server, hey, what APIs do you have? And currently, we can't ask that question. The only way to do it is to somehow extract that dot .proto file. Enter gRPC reflection. We can ask the server what APIs they have, and you may want reflection for two reasons. Number one, we want the servers to expose which endpoints are available, which is a huge difference to, for example, a REST API, where we don't know in advance which API, which API endpoints exist. And the second thing is that it will allow us to use CLI interfaces that do support reflection, not, not every CLI supports reflection. But basically, the CLI tool will talk to your server, and we won't need a preliminary dot .proto file. So what we'll do is that in the first step, we'll implement reflection on our server. In the second step, we'll use the Evans CLI to practice on the client side. So let's get started. So now I am on the gRPC Go GitHub repository. And so if I scroll down and go to reflection, we're going to see how we can add reflection to our gRPC Go project. And so if we scroll down, we can see that we basically need to import this one dependency called golang uh, google golang.org slash gRPC slash reflection. And then we'll have um, the, uh, some code to add, which is reflection.register and then s, which is our server. And so this is what we have to do. So let's go have a look and try to do this. So I'll copy this. I'll copy the entire thing, actually, and we'll figure it out in a second. So let's go to the calculator, calculator server and server.go. And so in there, I'm going to add the right import statement. So I'm just going to add this one here. I won't need this and I will just cut this is a bit dirty, but this will work. I will just cut what I need. So where is my server? It's at the very bottom. And so my server is right here. And this is where I've registered my calculator service. And now I will also register uh, reflection. So I'll do reflection.register and S. And that's about it, really. The only thing I need to do to enable reflection is you just copy that line and make sure we have the right import. So that's pretty nice. Now let's go ahead and save this, and then I'm going to run my server.go. So I'll do go run calculator server.go. And now my calculator server is running. Let's take a note of the port. It is running on port 50051. So next step is to install Evans. So what we'll do is that we'll go to Evans CLI gRPC. And then we click the first link. And so this is a really good CLI or command line interface that I really like. It's quite popular and it supports reflection. So it's called Evans and I really like it. And so there's a, a mode to use Reparel, so CLI mode. And so if we scroll down and we go to the installation, there's multiple way of installing it. The first one is to go to a GitHub releases, or if you have a Mac, you can just use brew or if you, we use go, so we can just type go get github.com slash ktr0731 slash Evans. So there's multiple ways of doing it. Choose whichever way you like, to be honest. And the GitHub releases is quite nice because it's pre-compiled executable. So this is for Mac, this is for Linux, and this is for Windows. So choose whichever mode you prefer, really. Um, just go ahead and install it. So my calculator server is running, and now I'm going to Evans, and I'll type Evans. And so for me, version is 067. And so as we can see, we have a lot of options, but we'll start it as a CLI mode. Uh, so we'll just do Evans, actually. And then we can define the host, the port, but we'll use the default, so we won't have to override anything. We'll just specify the port just in case. So Evans minus P50051 to specify we port connect to the port 50051. And then in terms of reflection, because we want to use gRPC reflection, we do minus R, so minus R. And here we go, we're in Evans. Okay, so how do we use Evans? Well, the best way is to go to the documentation as well and to look at the usage. So there's a show package command, there's a show service and a show message command. We'll get to explore them. Then you can get more description and we can also call RPCs. And I'll just show you how to do this in a second. 
So let's go ahead and practice. So if we do show package, we get a default package. This is because we use reflection. Now we can do show service and we can see the calculator service right here. And so the cool thing is that we get this in the table. So we get the calculator service, the name of the RPC, the request type and the response type. And if we do show message, we get a list of all the messages that are available to us. We can also do desk for description and we can describe a message. So for example, some request. And here we say that some request is a message that contains two fields of types int 32. So overall, I find it really, really cool that we can do these things. Okay. So let's go back to the beginning, show package, and then you have to do package default to specify that you're, you are using the package default, but we were already in default, as you can see. Now we do show service. And here we have to specify we want to use the calculator service. So we'll do service calculator service. And now, as you can see on the left hand side, we are in default dot calculator service. Okay, that works. And now we can call some RPCs. So we'll do call, for example, sum, and it starts prompting us for some fields. So we'll first number we'll say 12, second number 32, and the sum result is 44. How awesome is that, right? We just called um, our gRPC server without even writing a specific client code, we just use a CLI. So we can do obviously a different type of calls. So let's just try, for example, prime number decomposition, which is server streaming. So we'll do call prime number decomposition. And so let's just put put in like some big number. Okay. And boom, here we go. We have the prime number decomposition that happened in a second. So we see all the prime factors right here that streamed through my screen very, very quickly. Okay, let's just do it again. Let's find another service to call. So compute average was client streaming. So we'll call it We'll call compute average that's client streaming and so here we can say okay i'm going to give you some numbers and as you can see because this is client streaming it never stops asking me for some numbers up until i do control d and when i do control d i basically send the shutdown signal and i get the average back as a result so very awesome find maximum was if i do remember it was by dice so i'll do call find maximum and here we get to get a by die streaming happening. So let's take number three, uh, three. And so the maximum is three. Yes, that makes sense. Then number four, the maximum is four. Number one, we don't get any more response. Number two, no responses. But if we go number six, yes, the new maximum has been updated. Number 10, still updates. Number three again, no updates. And I do control D to exit when I'm done. And boom, we know that the last maximum is 10. So very, very awesome. And then finally, if we do show service again, and the last we can call is square root. So we can call square root. So we can give a positive number, for example, 400, and the square root is 20. But if I call square root with minus 42, we get an RPC error, which says invalid argument and the description of the error message is received a negative number minus 42. So overall, the CLI is really awesome. As you can see, there's auto completion, there's support for all kinds of streamings, and it does allow us to just talk to gRPC servers that have reflection enabled. This wasn't possible if we didn't enable gRPC reflection. So I hope that makes sense. I hope that was helpful, and I will see you in the next lecture.